Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be playing some Lissandra in the mid lane and showing you how to carry with the best runes in build possible. We have Electrocute with Cheap Shot, Eyeball, Ultimate Hunter. You can also go for a Relentless Hunter, but Ultimate Hunter is much better for mid and late game team fights with Mana Flow Transcendence, Double AP, and Armor. It's pretty rare to get solo kills in lane on Lissandra. You're much more likely to get kills if you get a gank from your jungler or if you roam. However, if you are up against a melee champion, the odds of you getting a solo kill become much higher, such as a Yasuo, a Jace, or a Talon. With that being said, Talon could just sit back and rake, so we may not get a kill with the Ignite, it is what it is. You'll typically end up taking Teleport and Corruption Potion versus super pokey matchups, super long range matchups, things like Zig Zarath. But in the majority of matchups, D Ring 2 Pot is the way to go. Your Q has a base range of 725, but when you shatter, it goes to 825. So her Q range pretty far. The base range is even longer than a Caitlyn auto. So keep that in mind. We're going to go ahead and get this wave pushing. I don't see the Talon over here. I'll put one auto on the back line. So the next Q kills. If you start with corruption, it makes last hitting a little bit more challenging, but uh, still very doable. I gave up some minions there. I wanted to get off my electrocute proc. You generally don't want to give up minions to hit the enemy champion. I see he doesn't have many potions though. Hey, that wasn't a very good interaction for him. We'll go ahead and get our ward down over here. Play towards our bot side. And get this pushing. He's playing pretty aggressive, honestly. I should have stepped forward off that level two there. Great trade for us. I don't want to miss a minion to hit him with one more auto though. I'll fight him to the death on my backline here. He's dead. He's literally a goner. So his mistake was I had way more HP than him. And he was threatening as if he could trade with me. When I could just stand there and basically auto him down. And use some abilities. Okay, he would jump away. Oh, he's on ghost though. I'm dead. He wasn't expecting Hecarim to come that early. He only did a three camp clear. I wanted to finish shoving wave. First back, typically Boots and a Dark Sill is the way to go. Mejaez is Lissandra's highest win rate item. Mejaez has an 80% win rate. With that being said, do not buy Mejaez unless you have at least 8 stacks on your Dark Sill, but preferably 10. This is not a cannon wave, so I shouldn't necessarily roam here. That being said, he's not uh, seemingly trying to push it very hard. I'll go ahead and roam and give up a wave. You wouldn't generally want to, but if you are roaming from base, sometimes the enemies will kind of slow push it like this. He may think he has that in a freeze type of position. We'll see. Got to get in behind these guys. A big E in behind. Thresh doesn't really have anywhere to go. Well, we want to snare him first before we use our Q. That way we don't miss it. In a perfect world, every combo starts with a W or an R. That way you can't miss your Q or your E. Same thing with your Everfrost. You want to ideally snare them first with W and then Everfrost so you can't miss it. This is annoying. Very nice. Auto attack Q. Auto attack W. Don't want to be missing all of those. I'll go ahead and pop potion here. His rake's on cooldown. We can look to trade. I do have some Dark Seal stack to where I... We really don't want to die at this point. We can really just play for six. Hecarim just went bot side. Since my Q's on a cooldown, we can't trade with him very well here. Oh, there's uh, Shivana. Yontem getting the W auto attack Q. Okay, Shivana's just low damage. She didn't have press the attack. She has Dark Harvest instead. Lissandra's ability to get away is actually incredibly high. It looks like they're trying to stop me from dumping this wave. I'm a word right there. I need to know where this guy's at. We can go ahead, look for a reset, roam from base. Even though it's not a cannon wave, this guy's kind of low. We'll look to go for, I'd say Lucid's honestly, with how this guy's playing. You don't... You shouldn't buy too many potions. In fact, you can end up getting a refill. He shouldn't have stayed since he's low mana. I can go back, grab wave roam. Sorks are definitely a good option. My team's already kind of AP heavy though, so I'll end up getting a void staff at some point. If your team isn't AP heavy, then Sork Shoe Rush is pretty strong because they won't have any magic resist, but they're going to have lots of magic resist. Oh man. Thought I could finish that one with an auto. 
We'll go ahead and dump this wave and look for a roam. In a perfect world, you're hitting the minions and the enemy champion with your Qs. But oftentimes, they're not standing on their minions in that way to where you can only really hit one at a time. So normally, you kind of just default to hitting the minions if they're not trying to trade heavy with you. Your Q costs medium mana. Your W costs pretty much nothing, and then your E costs a lot. Your E also has a very high cooldown to where you try to hold on to your E if possible. Got over. Got her slow. W. Ignite. Need one more auto. I think she's dead off that. Nice. Yeah, just barely. Yeah, sure enough. Hecarim's here. Auto attack W. Got him with the snare. Auto attack E. Got him with the Q auto. I got my R here as well. Pop R on myself. The big heal, get him with the snare, and we can walk away. The reason why you pretty much always end up roaming bot side is because every single one of Lissandra's abilities is AoE damage, including her passive. To where if you're constantly roaming top, you're missing out on that. If you go bot, you can potentially get double kills, double assists, and start stacking that Dark Sill. Going for a Lost Chapter is super valuable. Super, 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 super valuable. I don't really need Warding Totem anymore. As long as you have your E up in lane, generally you're impossible to kill. You can always hop away to it. It goes to its final destination and then you have pretty much a whole nother second to jump to it if you so choose. Super, super strong. Eight stacks of Dark Seal. We're in a great spot to carry this game. Just stay alive, get our mesh rolling. You generally want to get Everfrost before you get your mesh and mesh is not 100% necessary. You can leave it on Dark Seal if you really want to. Walk into the hallway with a WQ. Very nice. Auto attack E. I didn't have any other abilities to fight him there, so that was one of our better options. Kind of want this play. Well, this guy's low. I can just flash WQ him, but I don't want to lose Dark Seal stacks. I want to bait Hecarim into staying. He, I think he's trying to bait me right now. Auto attack W, Q, down he goes. He didn't respect us at all there. We staggered our CC. You don't want to put all your CC on the map once. You want to put, for example, if I R him there, because R has uh, a bit more range than W, if we do R, then we want to wait until right as it's about to finish, then we'll hit him with the W. That way we can stagger the CC and maximize how long he can't move rather than putting all of it on him at once and then... He can move immediately. Auto attack Q. Gonna snare him down. Uh, I, I don't know how that smite worked, but I kind of had to leave. I didn't have abilities to stay. I'd already burned my snare as well. I'll flash that. That was a good hook from him. That was actually a pretty solid hook. He had nowhere to go. Zerath had him on the pinch. I got a reset, I think. I am sitting on full Everfrost as well. Someone should grab that mid wave there, but no one's there to get it. Full Everfrost. We can E out of base. Boom. Everfrost gives you a lot of playmaking potential. Lucids are also cheaper than uh, the Sork Shoes. In some situations, you would go for Ignite and TP. The thing is, for mid and late game, having Flash is super valuable. It's hard not to take Flash on Lissandra. Should have let that last turret shot hit the minions. I've, <laughs> I haven't been farming well this game. Have gotten off a few half-decent roams, but the CSing, not so much. Like the first wave missing three minions, you should have all six on Lissandra pretty consistently. Pop him with an R, QW, auto. Down he goes. Everfrost wouldn't have gone off fast enough. I needed the range from my R to secure that. I can't move. This Thresh is landing every ability. Absolutely zero follow-up. He was saving R until after I was dead. They knew exactly where I was, and they were just kind of waiting in bush for me. It's unfortunate. Lost a lot of Dark Sill on that. 
You lose five stacks. Holy crap. When did they change that? I think it used to be four at one point. Five stacks is a lot. That's two kills and assists. So that's about the same as a mesh losing the 10 stacks because that's two kills and an assist. Without R, I can't deal with MF very easily. Her autos are shredding me. Unfortunate. Got to get the Dark Seal back up. We'll pick up the Mesh. Draxel's definitely our win con. Lissandra's a huge, huge team fighter with all of her AoE damage. You really can't uh, look to split push on her. Her autos don't do proper damage. Rush is hovering mid for some reason. I'll lay that defensively so I can pop over with an E. You can max her E second for the cooldown, but your W, the root duration goes up, which is super useful for landing extra Qs while they're still hard CC'd. Lissandra's W is realistically probably her best ability because you can cast it without standing still, and it's instant. And the mana cost is stupidly cheap. If the cooldown would get down as low as her Q cooldown, you would actually max W first, but the cooldown doesn't get down to that same level. I'll attack E, Q, Ignite. She should, he should die from that. It's my level 8 Ignite versus his, at the time, my level 8 Ignite versus his level 7 health pool there. Staggered all of our CC. Oh, hey, friend. Dodge that out. I see Thresh is on his way. Yeah, what are you going to do, buddy? You can't do anything. My E's on cooldown now, so I'm somewhat susceptible to what they're trying to do. Thresh is wasting a lot of time, though, showing on the map and not really getting anything out of it. My E's back up, so I can go up again. <clears throat> would like to spend my gold before dragon fight. I'll stay for this wave. This drag fight's the most important thing. Drags make Shivana tankier, and we're also a big team fighter. Spam pinged it out. Teammates listen. Imagine that. Oh, I was going to miss the cannon if I didn't do that. That should be turret. Turret plate gold for me. The minions, nice, 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 175. I can still be the dragon on time. As long as you don't start Ruru Recall really any later than the 30 second mark, you can usually get there on time. We'll go ahead and pick this up. We'll go ahead and pick that up. Stopwatch. I'll grab this as well and a little bit of that. The blue ward is the best, really the best uh, overall trinket option. It's why it doesn't let you get it till level nine. You can safely check dragons, barons, and scary things from a distance without having to get close enough to ward it. It's basically a free Luxar, a vision. And you can have an infinite amount of them laid at a time. Pretty useful. I'll head over here. Hecarim is not a full item. These guys are really not that strong. Can't quite reach. Could have flashed there. We got the Hecarim R. I'll wait for the next team fight. I'm not in a big hurry. Talon is a bot side. My CS score is pretty low. It's a bit higher than Talon's, though. Don't know where Thresh is. I don't want him to lantern the MF. Oof, 300 damage. Holy moly. It hurts. If they start that dragon, they're all going to die. Trying to hold this guy still. Down he goes. Got my little zombie with me. I mean, the turret's one auto attack, Mundo, seriously. I didn't ignite first. I messed that up. I goofed. Oh, I goofed hard there. I thought I could kill the turret with a single auto attack, but it took two. And Mundo was like, yeah, you know what? I'll watch you die. I don't think he realized what I was trying to do. When you don't have minions with you, the turrets essentially take a fifth damage. So uh, instead of one auto attack easily overkilling, it took more than I would have liked. Too much damage. Oh well, we have double dragons. Even if I only have one mesh. Oh, it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we 
fairly useless item with only one stack, but we'll get them back off a of one team fight. That's all it's gonna take, one team fight. Arn yourself does uh, just as much damage, and it also heals you, but obviously it doesn't CC them really. It's just a slow. Zerath and uh, Seraphine might get picked there. For some reason, MF is mid. Very cool. Level 2 R. I should be able to one tap MF. Please don't be warded. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. Took a lot of abilities to kill her. It's because our mesh isn't giving any real value yet. Hitting with the QW. And Seraphine lands her skill shots for free. Look at that. Our mesh is already stacking back up. Yeah, that one turret play. I really shouldn't have done that since I had mesh. So greedy. Super, super greedy. Make sure I don't get flanked. And play towards my right side. Ooh, Hecarim. You're about to die. Hey, friend. Goodbye, friend. He had nowhere to go. Claw goes one way, I go the other. Completely pinched. He's back up. And we also have 10% movement speed from Mesh right now, so we're decently quick. RQ way out ranges MF auto range. Most AD carries are 550, RQ is 725. They have one taps the back line. That's awesome. R is up. I'm kind of low on mana. Should have enough for this combo, though. There's just no follow-up from the team. Holy crap. I'm out of mana. I can't really do anything else here. I gotta back off. As you can see, Lissandra's single target damage really isn't that high. I mean, MF has zero HP items. Zero magic resist items. And even with a full combo... We, we barely have enough damage to kill her, and we have to keep cycling in queues over and over. It's exactly why uh, Majaiz is so important for what you're trying to do on her. I'd say we go for Robidon from here, since we have the mesh stacking up. Because she does have good AP scaling. 80%. AP scaling on any ability is high for any champion. It's just her base damages are low. 80% scaling, 70% scaling, 60% scaling, 75% AP scaling on the damage, 25% on the heal. Like the AP scaling is actually super high. That's why Mesh has such a good win rate on her. It also lets you go into Robidon, of course. But boy, oh boy, that base damage. Pfft, not, uh, not really what you want. I think the game's pretty much over though, as long as I don't die again. They won't get my shutdown and the mesh damage is too high. Mana flow is kind of important on Lissandra. Gathering Storm Absolute Focus is viable, but it makes tier somewhat necessary. It also makes Lost Chapter First Recall much more necessary. So yeah, you have to farm even better if you're going to go Absolute Gathering Storm, otherwise it'll constantly be out of mana. Guys hopping around everywhere. No way to catch up to him. Hey, friend. Goodbye, friend. It's the Lissandra combo. Hey, look at look at him hopping all over the place. He's gonna go for that wave like a goofball. All right, I don't know where he went actually. He must have just kept running. Alrighty, I could just reset from here. I don't really need to stay. I don't have R. Zhonya's in your R and Synergy lets you perma tank, perma draw aggro. You're not targetable in either one of them, and you don't take damage in either one of them. Let's pick that up. We're at 400 AP now. 
Q's, once again, everything's AoE damage, so 526, 460, 315, 556. It seems like the damage is delayed when you are yourself. Like when you are the enemies, the damage is pretty much instant, but on yourself, it almost seems like it doesn't do anything initially. 45% slow. Yeah. Normally, you want to R them unless they're giga focusing you. The, uh, the stun on is super, super valuable. One and a half second stun. It's pretty good since it's point and click at a decent range too. Like, what is that? Like 500? Yeah, goodbye. My E didn't even need to hit him and he died on that one. R, Q, W, Everfrost, E, seal the deal. Through all that CC, we get the Q two or three times while they're still held still. Because Everfrost is a second, R is a second and a half, W is a second and a half. So we have four seconds. So we land the first Q. Yeah, so it's about two extra Qs after the first one. Just about. R is coming off off a of cooldown, only 48 seconds because I have ultimate hunter. Gotta back out of there. I need someone else to tank. Hey friends. Down they go. I'd say that's GG's right there. Hey friend. And yep, that's a good game. We'll take a look at damage dealt, damage taken. Looking at damage dealt enemy champions, we had the most in the game. Looking at damage taken, kind of met, and then for runes, ultra high value. All in all, Lissandra is a great shove roam champion. Don't expect to get solo kills in lane though. It's pretty rare unless you're up against a melee champion who's willing to limit test against you. Her team fighting capabilities are insane and you can perma aggro. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.